Greetings from Sefer Publishing Group, and welcome to another edition of Sefer Moments. I'm Dr. Stephen Pigeon. Today we're going to be talking about something uh, pretty exciting. We're going to be talking about the two olive trees, and or maybe the one olive tree. But we're going to be talking about some pretty exciting passages in Scripture, most of which are found in chapters 11. Chapters 11. This is going to make it easy for you to remember how to, de to determine these references when you go to discuss this later on with your friends. But we begin with a passage that is found in Yeshaya, who or Isaiah, chapter 11, of course, verses 1 through 5. And there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Yeshai, or Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. And the Ruach Yahuwah shall rest upon him, and the Ruach Hokma and Bina, and the Ruach Etza and Gevara, and the Ruach Da'at and the Yira of Yahuwah and shall make him of quick understanding in the fear of Yahweh, and he shall not judge after the sight of his eyes, neither reprove after the hearing of his ears. But with righteousness shall he judge the poor, and reprove with equity for the meek of the earth, and he shall smite the earth with the rod of his mouth, and with the breath of his lips shall he slay the wicked, and righteousness shall be the belt of his loins, and faithfulness the belt of his reins. Well, here ago, we see again this concept of, first of all, he's going to be smiting with the rod of his mouth, which in Revelation is described as a two-edged sword, a two-edged sword. But for purposes of our discussion here, we begin with this passage in 11.1. And there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Yeshai. Now, the question is, what is the stem of Yeshai? Well, the stem of Yeshai is described with particularity in Matthew 1. Matthew Yahu or Matthew 1. And Matthew 1 is a funny passage because it's the passage where most people kind of pass out cold when they start reading the New Testament because it begins with the Abraham begat Isaac, who begat Jacob, who begat the 12 sons, who begat Perez, who begat, and it goes down this long list of son after son after son after son after naming the father, the father, the father, the father. All of that becomes very important because it tells you that the genealogy is patrilineal. Patrilineal. The discussion, no matter what you're taught under the Talmud, Matthew 1 tells you that the genealogy is patrilineal. And Matthew 1, of course, discusses the patrilineal genealogy of Miriam, not Joseph. Joseph's uh, uh, lineal, uh, genealogy is set forth in Luke 3. And if you compare Luke 3 to Matthew 1, you will see two different genealogies. Because Joseph hails from Nathan, or Nathan, the son of David, whereas Miriam comes of the line of Solomon, the son of David. That is to say that Miriam was not just some maiden hanging around in Nazareth, like you're told in so many of the fiction stories, but in fact was the daughter of the true king of Judea, who of course was unable to take the throne following the curse that came upon Jeconiah as a result of the evil that was done by Manasseh, the grandson of Hezekiah. If you recall, Manasseh reigned for 55 years and did nothing but evil. Even though in the Et Sefer we have his prayer of repentance that prayer didn't come until the end of his life, after 55 years of giving Baal worship and Ashtaroth worship and Dagon worship to all of Judea. And so the curse was brought on Judea. The curse was brought on Judea. And, and Yoshiah, Josiah, was told, you know, because you are a righteous man, you've torn down these temples in the high places. You've torn down the Ashtaroth poles. You've burned these altars of incense to Baalis. Because you have done that, it will not come upon you, but it will come upon your son. And the son, of course, was Yekoniah, or Yekoniahu. And when you look at that, you say, well, what about these other sons, Joachim, Joachim, and all these others? Well, if you look in Matthew 1, it tells you it was Yekoniah and his brethren, which included, by the way, Zechar, um, Zedekiah. And so you see that that line of kings came to an end. The ability to hold the throne came to an end, but the kings did not. We had Shealtiel and then Zerubbabel, who would rebuild the second temple. And this list of kings goes down to Yosef, the father of Miriam. So Miriam wasn't just some maiden. She was the high princess 
in the line of kings of Judea. Okay? So when we talk about the stem of Yeshai, the stem of Yeshai also flowed through to David and then to his son Nathan or Nathan, and then from Nathan to Joseph. Okay? And then to Joseph. So you see that there shall come forth out of the rod of the stem of Yeshai a branch. Now, a branch, in this particular case, the word is Sameach, um, excuse me, Samach, and so Samach Sadiq, the righteous branch, but the branch is also referred to in Zechariah or Zachariahu as the Netzer, Netzer, the branch, Netzer. And so Mashiach is referred to as Netzer or Netzeri, the branch. Also the man from Natsarot or the city of branches. Natsarot, the city of branches, Netzer, the branch, Netzeri, HaMashiach, the Netzeri, Ha Netzeri, the branch, Mashiach, the branch, Mashiach, the Nazarene, right? So now what is this stem of Yishai? We see that the stem of Yishai is really a progression of Y DNA from Yishai straight through to Yosef, the father of Miriam. We have the Y-DNA, the Y-DNA passing. And of course, the, dis the description of the Y-DNA goes all the way back to Adam through Sheth or Seth and his progeny. That Y-DNA is in a continuous stream to Noach and from Noach, of course, to his son Shem. And then from Shem, you have this genealogy to Abraham uh, you know, through his son um, Arpaxid. Then you have this genealogy to Abraham. From Abraham, to, there was a covenant given. The covenant to Abraham then became an oath to Yitzhak, which became a law, or in the Hebrew, hok, which became a law unto Yaakov. And Yaakov took the name Yasharel, the upright in El. Yasharel, Yasharel. And Yasharel in Jubilees 2, I believe it's verse 21, it says that the seed of Yasharel is my firstborn. The seed of Yasharel is my firstborn son. In Genesis, you have the phrase that the seed of Yasharel is my firstborn son. But in Jubilees, it is the seed of Yasharel. Now, what is the seed? The seed is the stem of Jesse. Because what you are talking about here is you're talking about a direct lineage of Y DNA, that is the DNA of the father in direct lineage, which continues unless mutated, it's a continuous stream of DNA with its epigenetic qualities, its retention and its memory, its historic memory going from Adam forward. And so this epigenetic model and the genetic model is this is the stem of Jesse and the seed of Yaakov, the seed of Yasharel, who is Hamashiach, will be the branch that grows out of the roots of the tree. Well, the tree was hewn. The tree was hewn. The tree was cut down. Now let's take a look and let's move on. Let's continue. No, but before we go on, verse 2 in, Yish in Yishayahu 11, 2, and the Ruach Yahuwah, that is the spirit of Yah, shall rest upon him. The Ruach Chokmah, that is the spirit of wisdom. The Ruach Bina, the spirit of understanding. The Ruach Etzah, the spirit of counsel. The Ruach Gevarah, the spirit of strength. The Ruach Da'at, the spirit of knowledge and the Yira of Yahuwah, the spirit of fear or reverence for Yahuwah. Okay? Now, to get further corroboration on this particular passage, we have to look at chapter 11 of Jeremiah, Yirmiyahu. Now, this will begin in verse 16, and here you have Yirmiyahu saying, And he called your name a green olive tree, fair and of goodly fruit. But with the noise of a great tumult, he has kindled fire upon it, and the branches of it are broken. So this green olive tree, this green olive tree, which is the stem of Jesse, this green olive tree, the stem of Jesse, that goes all the way back in direct lineage to Abraham, and from Abraham all the way back to Noah, and from Noah all the way back to Adam, we see that the branches are broken off. So you see when he, when when Yeshayahu is saying that a branch shall grow out of the roots of the stem, when you see this lopping off of the kingship, which takes place during the time of Yekoniah, or Yekoniahu, you see that the kingship is terminated, that even though the king's, the bloodline continues, the king cannot sit on the throne of Judea. 
because that has been taken away from him as a result of the sins of Manasseh. And so all of the branches are broken off, but from this root now, a branch will grow, a netzer will grow, a samak sadik, a righteous branch will grow. All right, now let's let's carry on here. Let's take a look. We've got an exception to our 11 rule, which is found in Zechariah. Zechariah. Now this is chapter 4. It's an important chapter. I'm going to read most of it for us here. But this is an important chapter. Zechariah turns out it's an extremely important book uh, for any student of the Messiah to read. And so we see here in Zechariah, Zechariah 4, And the angel that talked with me came again and waked me as a man that is wakened out of his sleep. And he said to me, what do you see? So Zechariah is being wakened up. Oh, what do I see? <laughs> and, I, and I said, I have looked, and behold, there's a menorah, all of gold, with a bowl upon the top of it, and his seven lamps thereon, and seven pipes to the seven lamps, which are upon the top thereof, and two olive trees by it one upon the right of the side of the bowl, which, and on the other upon the left side of. And so I answered and spoke to the angel, and I said, Hey, what are these? And the angel said, Don't you know what these are? And Zechariah says, Nope, I don't. And he says, This is the word of Yahweh and the Zerubbabel. Right? Again, Zerubbabel in the line of kings who had gone back to build the second temple. Not by might, not by power, but by my ruach, says Yahweh Sevoot. Okay. Now let's skip down to verse 11. We can see more about these two olive trees. Then I answered and I said unto him, What are these two olive trees upon the right side of the menorah and upon the left side? And I answered again and said unto him, What are these two olive branches, which through the two golden pipes empty the golden oil out of themselves? Now again, you're talking about olive branches. Netzerim, Netzerim. And he said to me, do you not know what these be? And I said, no, I do not. And he said, these are the two anointed ones that stand by the Adonai of the whole earth. Hmm. Well, that's interesting. Do we have a definition as to what these anointed ones might be? Well, we have a discussion, more discussion about the olive tree, the stem of Jesse, the root of Jesse, okay, the root of Jesse, a branch will grow out of his roots, which is the stem of Jesse, which is the Y DNA line that goes all the way back to Adam, which is the seed of Yasharel, the seed of Yasharel. Remember, there's kind of a dividing line in the history here that you have 22 generations from Adam to Yaakov. You have 22 kinds of work given to mankind. You have 22 fundamental species of animals given to mankind. There are 22 letters in the Hebrew alphabet. Arguably, there are 22 subatomic particles which create all of creation. I say arguably. But what you see is you see this number 22 appearing over and over and over again. And this number 22 is telling you that there's a set apart distance. Once you finish those 22, we arrive at the house of Yasharel. The house of Yasharel crosses over the Yardan or the Jordan River into the promised land on the first day of the 50th jubilee. These are important, important markers because it gives you some idea that the concept was for this chosen people to arrive. And why were these people chosen? Because they were the smartest, the quickest, the fastest, the prettiest, the richest? No. They were chosen because Yah knew that they would guard his Shabbat. They would guard his Shabbat. And so the chosen people are those who guard the Shabbatot, that is, all of the Sabbaths, of Yah. These are the chosen people. These are the chosen people. And so Paul says here in Romaim chapter 11, beginning at verse 13, For I speak to you other nations. Now, in the Hebrew, that's goyim. Uh, in the Greek, it's ethnos. In the Latin, it's Gentiles. But we don't use the Latin term at all. Because he's speaking to the other nations. For I speak to you other nations inasmuch as I am the apostle of the other nations, I magnify my office. If by any means I may provoke to emulation at them which are my flesh, and might save some of them. For the casting away of them be the reconciling of the world, what shall be the receiving of them 
but life from the dead. Now here he's talking about some of his flesh. He's a Benjamite. And the Benjamites and the Yahudim, that is to say the Jews, and the Levites, or the Leviim, were citizens. These were the tribes that remained as citizens of Judea and became known as Jews. Because Jew was not a derogative term for uh, the Yahudim, but it was a derogative term or a nationalist term for those who were citizens of the kingdom of Judea, or in the Hebrew, Yahud, Yahud, Yahud. So those who were citizens of Yahud were Yahudim, or Jews. Those who were citizens of Judea were Jews. And that included primarily Benjamites, Levites, and Jews, or Yahudim, Benjamim, Leviim. Okay. And he's saying, so here, well, if I may provoke to emulation those who are Jews of my flesh and might save some of them, for if the casting away of them, that is, when the branches were cut off, be the reconciling of the world, if that's what's going to reconcile the world to Mashiach, then what shall the receiving of them be but life from the dead? And he's talking about their life, that they are dead but if by reconciling them to Mashiach, that they would have life. For if the first fruit be holy, the lump is also holy. Now he's speaking here, the first fruit, he's talking about the root. He's talking about the root of Jesse. The root of Jesse was holy, was made holy in the oath and the law, in the covenant given to Abraham, which became an oath to Yitzhak, which became a law to Yasharel, and which became a birthright to the house of Yasharel, this, if the first fruit is holy, the lump is also holy, and if the root is holy, if the root is holy, that is to say, the root of Jesse, into which the branch has grown, then so are the branches. And if some of the branches are broken off, and you being a wild olive tree, were grafted in among them, and then partake of the root and the fatness of the olive tree. Well, now, the root of Jesse is the fat olive tree, okay? So you have a faith that was given with the giving of the Torah that was given to the whole of the house of Yasharel at Sinai. And this Torah, set out in Deuteronomy 5, was called a covenant. It was called a covenant, and it wasn't a conditional covenant. It was given as a covenant and said, you shall live in these. And at the end of the giving of the Ten Commandments, Yah said to Moshe, and he added nothing further. And so you have this covenant that was given to the whole of the Yasharel. Part of that was the keeping of the Shabbatot, the Sabbaths, which include the feasts set forth in Leviticus 23. Okay? And what he's saying is this wholeness, this root of Jesse, was in fact holy. It was righteous. It was set apart. It was holy. It was Kodesh. And so because of that, if you're grafted into that root, then you partake of the fatness of the olive tree. Now, the olive tree is not Judaism. People say, well, we live in a Judeo-Christian world. Well, we may, but that doesn't reflect the true faith. The true faith is the faith of Yasharel, the chosen people, Yasharel, the upright in El. These were the ones who were chosen to keep the Shabbatot. These were the ones who were called to be holy, for Yah is holy. These are the ones who were called to the covenant of the ten Devarim. These are the ones who were called to the birthright. These are the ones that were called. But you see, all of the branches were lopped off. Jeremiah tells you that it wasn't just the northern kingdom of Yisrael, that had its branches lopped off, but it was both Yisrael and Yehuda or Yahud, that had their branches lopped off. They were branches that were lopped off the olive tree. They were lopped off, okay? So all you had remaining was the root. You had the root of Yeshai remaining. And from that root, a branch sprung up. Which branch? Shealtiel, Zerubbabel, Zadok, Yosef, which branch, which branch came out of the root of Yeshai? And the answer is, Yahusha HaMashiach is the branch that came out of the root of Yeshai. 
Okay? And by the time that the branch was growing out of the root of Yishai, you had competing trees in the garden saying, oh no, the oral law is the correct path to follow. No, the rabbinical teaching is the correct path to follow. And this was the competition that was taking place with the Pharisees proclaiming a doctrine and putting this doctrine in place, which was the Mishnah or the duplicate law, the double, proclaiming this Mishnah saying, this is the burden you must bear. And Mashiach says in Matthew 23, you load a burden on people that is grievous, that prevents them from entering the kingdom, and you lift not one finger to help them. This was the burden they were loading on. They were loading this burden of the Mishnah on people, this duplicate law, and not lifting a finger to help them. And so this was a competing tree. It was not the root of Yishai, for the root of Yishai was grounded wholly in Torah and in the covenants of Abraham, Yitzhak, and Yaakov. Okay? And so he says, boast you not against the branches that were cut off. But if you boast, you do not bear the root. But the root bears you. In other words, you're not giving life to the root. The root is giving the life to you. And what is this root? It is Mashiach. You will say then the branches were broken off that I might be grafted in. Well, that's true. Because of unbelief, they were broken off. You see, when we talk about this unbelief, you're talking about people who said, well, if I do the ritual, then I've got a path to heaven without ever accepting the fact that there is a creator, without ever entering into a personal relationship with the creator, without even acknowledging the creator. Why do you do these things of the Talmud? Because my fathers did them and their fathers before them did them. It is tradition. This is why we do this, because it is our tradition. Well, what about Yah and his word? Uh, well, I don't believe there is a Yah. But I know for a fact we have the tradition because my rabbi told me so. You were broken off because you did not believe. You did not believe. You did not believe fundamentally that there was a Yah who took you out of Egypt and who broke the bonds of slavery. You did not accept that premise. And how quickly the house of Yasharel forgot, how quickly they forgot, they were building a golden calf before they'd been out of Egypt even a year. They forgot the blessings of the manna. They forgot the escape from the iron furnace of Egypt and that slavery. They forgot these things. We forgot these things. And we go chasing after Baali, and Molech, and Dagon. We like the guy in the fish head. The guy in the fish head gives us some promise of what I don't know. But Baali, he's our man. He gives us the pagan fertility rite. All we have to do is sacrifice children to him. Easy enough to do, especially if they're unborn. The Ashtaroth pole. Let's break out the Ishtar celebration. Let's have that pagan fertility rite every spring so that we know that we're going to have a great agricultural harvest this year by sacrificing to the fertility goddess. How quickly we forgot a creator whose yoke was easy, whose burden was light, who said, obey my commands and I will be your Elohim and you will be my children. Because of unbelief, they were broken off but you stand in their place as a grafted in branch to the scion, a grafted in branch to this root by your belief and only by your belief. So do not be high minded, but fear for if Yah spared not the natural branches, take heed lest he also not spare you. Well, how's that possible? Behold, therefore, the goodness and the severity of Yah. On them which fell severity, but toward you, goodness. If you continue in his goodness, well, let's see, goodness, what word would that be in the Hebrew? Tzedekah. Tzedek. 
righteousness, doing the correct things. What is Paul talking about here? He says, if you continue in his goodness, then you'll remain grafted in. But otherwise, if you don't continue in his goodness, if you think you can go running around, sinning all day long, cheating your neighbor, stealing, lying, and you know you do it, you steal and you lie and you cheat, and you think that you have cheap grace that gives you a license to commit these kinds of sin, and you think that, oh, gee, I was grafted in. End of story. They grafted me in with a welding rod. Oh, is that right? That's not what Paul says. If your goodness does not continue, you shall be cut off. I didn't write it. Paul wrote it. Anyway, without getting too harsh on this subject, suffice it to say that when we talk about this green olive tree, we're talking about Yasharel. And Yasharel, this green olive tree, had its branches cut off. And after its branches were cut off, by the blood atonement of Mashiach, the opportunity for the wild olive tree, which is all of us, which is all of us. You had a root of Jesse, a branch grew out of it. Hanetzari, Mashiach. That root, all branches are grafted in. And he says to you, Ani hagafen ata hanetzarim. I am the vine, you are the branches. You are grafted in and you are grafted in by means of your belief. Your belief in what? your belief that, in fact, this is the root of Jesse, this is the seed of Yasharel, this is the promise of the covenant, this is the king of the Yasharel or Yasharon, and that by his blood atonement, you are a branch that has the right to be grafted in. When you believe that and you claim that, then you are, in fact, grafted in. But remember, if you continue in his goodness, you shall remain grafted in. If you do not, you shall be cut off. All right, thank you. That's the word on the green olive tree. We'll see you again next time. Blessings.